The envelope of the new extension has thermal mass walls made of concrete. They're not brick veneer, which is standard practice, and they're not double brick, as in the old cottage. Typical construction systems, familiar to the building industry at large, are called brick veneer. The mass material, usually brick, is placed on the outside of the structural framework and the lightweight material on the inside. The resulting building looks solid, but it's an illusion really. For energy efficiency, we do the opposite. We build the frame and put the heavy mass material on the inside. Because we build our walls kind of back to front to most people, uh, we call it reverse brick veneer. And effectively, it means that all of the solid massive material is on the inside, not on the outside of the wall. And in this house, we've poured a concrete wall on the inside of the insulated layer, normally timber frame, in this case we've used a recycled polystyrene foam as insulation. That means the mass inside is kept at a stable temperature. What clads the outside of that and what happens between the insulation and the cladding is really important. We've used corrugated iron. It's very high weathering qualities, long lasting, the colour stays intact. Um, and in this case it's white, which means it reflects a huge amount of heat on the western face. Between that steel and the insulation is an air gap. And on the west, we ventilate the air gap so that when the, that hot summer sun is burning on the outside, the space inside gets really hot. That air is then exhausted through this ventilation system and means the insulation isn't having to do as much work. With their lightweight external cladding, these heavily insulated thermal mass walls look deceivingly lightweight from the outside. On the western wall, where no shade is available, there are six layers. The internal concrete layer, two layers of different insulating materials, an air gap layer which is ventilating, another bubble wrap insulated sheet, and then the external cladding layer. The proof of its effectiveness was tested during Adelaide's record-breaking heatwave in March 2008 when for 15 consecutive days, temperatures reached 35 degrees and above. The internal temperature of the extension maintained a constant comfortable temperature, needing no air conditioning. Our experience of the two walls, the one facing south and the one facing west, was that through that March heat wave, the temperatures of the two walls were no different than each other, and yet the western one was copying that western sun. A benchmark of good sustainable design is the building's capacity to maintain reasonably level temperatures inside the house while outside temperatures fluctuate. 